This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity. Okay, so I'm back from my little break. Sixers Swang, how you doing? Sixers Wong. Welcome to the stream. You're listening to this while you do chem homework. Sounds great. Anything to make chem homework a little bit uh, less boring, huh? And uh, you could just kill her and take the body to him for a discount, but that's just evil. Yeah, that's that's pretty horrific. I'm uh, pretty much playing a, a good a good guy kind of playthrough this time. Next time I play through the game, I'll play a rogue and I'll be a lot more evil. But so let's go back and what's the flame reveal? What's this guy doing? Copper Lane Marketplace is everything you could ever want to buy. I don't think that's true. Excuse me. Business around here took a hit when Stalwart's mines dried up. First I've heard of that. Some of the plays they put on at the amphitheater are quite good. Is that right? Such grim times. I'm glad that not everyone takes things so seriously. Alright, I'm sick of hearing your nonsense, sir. Wait. This guy wasn't here before. Another ship lost. A Valian merchant vessel dashed against the merciless rocks. No survivors. Still Londra's beacon lies dormant. Its doors barred to all. The waters claim many souls this season. All the news that's fit to yell. <laughs> what else you got, Crier? Come on, cry some shit. Cry. Cry. Cry more. Cry more! Please move along. I have a long list to get through. Fine. I didn't want to hear your stupid news anyway. Who's this? Just sauntering along. Alright, fine. Let's sell some of this loot. We just found a ton of loot. He still has... He has a lot of nice stuff to buy. That figurine would be a lovely addition to my arsenal. Okay. There we go, there's another 3,000 copper added to my coffers. Feeling a little better about my money situation now, that's good. So, I just took these off a bunch of drug dealers, here you go. What's going on here? Curio shop is done, paid my hirelings. Oh, look at this. This is about me locking the guy up in my prison, in my dungeons. I found an iron in Copper Lane, a hired thug impersonating a Svef dealer who owed a debt to his supplier. He was using the identity to sell Svef and thereby recoup the supplier's losses. I can release him. Of course, I'm not going to release him. I can go and, like, interrogate him and stuff if I go back to my, um, my keep. Which I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty pretty interested in doing since this is the first prisoner I've taken. That's it, that's all you have to say, Crier. Okay. I think it's because it's a different time of day. Because this Crier wasn't here before when I came to this marketplace. And all these commoners weren't walking around either. They shall see nothing while I see much. So I think. Must just be because it, it's not so early in the morning or whatever. So where was... She's inside the Goose and Fox, right? Let's 
What's all this about? Maybe we could go down for a quick look and come right back out, say we found nothing. What's this we? Dalton's your friend, not mine. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? Because I'm the kind of person who comes to town and immediately starts inserting myself into everyone's business. Hmm. You might find your type of work. What's that supposed to mean, my type of work? Got to laugh now and then, right? It's nice to see that somebody cares about the issues facing the Deerwood. Well, that's me. I'm a person who cares about the issues. Ooh, now I'm passionate too, also. Can't handle my passion. Zena says, with it being Easter, I still haven't found a single egg in the game. <laughs> yeah. No Easter eggs, huh? I don't even remember where this lady was. Oh, right there. Okay, cool. Kainra looks up at you as you approach. What happened with Pernisk? Did he give did you give him the ring? So I can lie. How is this a lie? This is like true. Oh, I see, because I don't tell him alright. Pernish was being impersonated by a powerful wizard. However, the real Pernish also deals with. She covers her mouth with her hand, shocked. Pernish? My Pernish is a Sveth dealer? If I didn't know you for an honest woman... See, if I didn't have that honest reputation from being honest so many times... She wouldn't believe me here, so I would say that and she would probably get pissed at me and accuse me of lying. That's pretty cool. She brings her fist down at the table, sloshing her drink. Hold on, let me see if I can actually slosh my drink. No, I can't possibly slosh my drink. It's not really very sloshable. It's in a bottle. It was worth a try, though. Damn it! How can I trust him after something like this? That he's lied to me for this long? She runs her hands through her hair and takes a deep breath. I should just be glad I found out about this before the wedding. Uh, now I get to give the life advice TM. You should listen to me. I kill things for a living. Therefore, you should listen to my advice. He needs help and forgiveness. Ugh. Do you really want to give up on your future together? You're smart to stay away from him. There are other men in Defiance Bay. Sorry I turned out like this. Mmm. Mmm. I believe in redemption. Maybe he can turn around, turn it around, and they can be stronger for it. Or maybe he'll hire a bunch more Sveth guards and I can come back and kill them all again. Either way, really is good. Right now, he needs help and forgiveness. Oh, once again, she only responded that way because I've said so many other benevolent things. That's amazing. Otherwise, she probably would have been like, no, shut up, that's dumb. You think I can help turn him around? I hadn't thought of it that way. She sighs. You really do see the best in everyone. And a little bit of extra positive reputation for me. I appreciate what you've done for us, and I'm certain Pernish feels the same way. You're always welcome to come see us if you need anything. Oh, and take this. She unclasped something from her neck. Picked it up from one of the merchants to help me stand firm in my decision. I'll be fine without it now. Quest completed. Boom. Got a bunch of XP. Still not ready to level up, though. Of course. Ooh. Hold on now. So... Um... 
When I was at Pernish's house, I learned that Pernish was actually a Sveft dealer. I broke the knees to Kanra, and she was appalled that he had lied to her. However, I was able to convince her to give Pernish a second chance. Quest complete. Um, what's going on with my biography? Ooh, you began exploring the extensive dungeon beneath your keep. Yeah, I did. Just getting my ass kicked down there, though. Taxes collected. This is the first time I've ever collected taxes on my keep. Cool. How much did I get? Lost 166 copper to bandits. So I guess the higher you have your security rating, the less you will lose to bandits. But the higher you have the prestige, the more you get. So I earned 782. I lost 166. So even with having to pay my wages, um, I still came out ahead there. That's pretty cool. I'm actually making money off of my stronghold. Major adventure added. The quest expires in two days. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up. And I'm still building this for one day, eight hours. Okay. So, major adventure rewards 15% experience, 500 or 1,000 copper and treasure. So I can assign one of my companions who's back at the back at the um, at the stronghold to this adventure. But what I don't know is this. Currently, my companions are all sitting there with no gear on because I took all their gear away naturally. I don't know if that matters. Like, if I send one on the adventure, like, are they going to fail because I, they don't have any gear? Like, do I have to put gear on them first and then send them on the adventure? Or does it not really even look at that? I don't really know the answer to that question. Ooh, I got a new necklace, though. Un ooh, it's got a story. Unwavering Resolve. Plus two intellect, plus one resolve. That's a pretty great necklace, actually. Young Talino Keel and his father were ambushed by Vithrak whilst on their way to Twin Elms. Before the child even registered the strange arachnids, his father thrust something into his hands and told him to run. As he turned to flee, the creatures blasted him with psionic energy. Talino's mind reeled, nearly overcome by the insidious power. Suddenly, he was pulled back to his immediate surroundings, half sprinting, half stumbling away from the Vithrak and his stricken father. Tolino made it to the edge of town before he collapsed. The town guards were baffled at how the child had withstood the attack. The item his father had given him was an old silver medallion. It was badly worn and missing its chain, and the words, Do not yield to fear, were barely visible upon its surface. As soon as he came of age, Tellino joined the personal guard of a local thane. When he did, he strung it on a thin silver chain and commissioned a priest to enchant the medallion with additional protective wards. Tellino went missing years later whilst on an expedition in the White March. And then a merchant got a hold of it and sold it to a woman, and then the woman gave it to me. The end. Well, that's pretty good. I, I want to wear that. I mean, I have the plus two perception one now. Seems like everything I get that's good is neck item. I have so many cloaks and necklaces, and I can only wear, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody can't wear a cloak or a necklace, so... Hmm. Maybe I should... Let me see something here. Dean says, well, she's a drunk. She spent the entire game in the tavern drinking, so how could she be picky? Yeah, I guess so. But again, you know, maybe she's just uh, having coffee. Maybe she's having tea. Maybe she's, uh, you know... <laughs> Oh, 
Probably not, though. I don't know what I want to do with this just yet. I know I need to send somebody on this adventure. Well, okay. Maybe I should send Aloth on this adventure. He'll take care of it, I hope. Thing. Raise my security level a little bit. Let's get a Rautai line breaker. That'll be a big Amawa guy, probably. Alright, so what I want to do... I should go back and talk to them at the house and see... I shall be quiet as a oh, she's still just chilling right here, huh? Which is not... Ernest and I have a lot to work through now. Well, yeah, you do. You should probably s stop sitting here drinking, though, is the first thing you should work through. Even the most daring of adventurers must keep up their strength. For fresh filling bread, see Hemyav, Glilded Vale, fine deer wood bread made from fine deer wood grain. Really? He's just doing commercials now? Come on, crier. Let's go back in here. Let's talk to this guy. Let him know that I handle this shit for him, and he should be very, very grateful. Monetarily grateful. Is he still ca- oh, no, he's not still cowering upstairs. No, he's down here. Hi, Pernish. Hello again! I can't thank you enough! I have my caner back? What, did she text you? She's still at the bar. And with her beside me, I'll be on the mend in no time. He smiles. Is there anything I can get you? With that discount, like I promised. Are you still selling Svef? I'll kill you. He is still selling Svef. What the fuck? Is there anything I can get you? It's the only thing you have for sale. Oh, she's... I'm... No, I'm going back to her. I'm like, you know what? Forget it. Don't, don't talk to that guy. He's... Don't... Oh, what if he were to sustain a tragic accident right now? These things happen, right? A discount. Why would I want this? It's horrible. You get minus focus on hit, minus perception, minus resolve. It's no good. It's no good. You know what, though? While I'm in here, though, I could sell you some stuff. Or maybe I don't really have anything to sell. I guess I already did all the selling, didn't I? Of the stuff that I want to sell right now. Holding on to a lot of this shit just because I am a hoarder. Okay, fine. Discount. I was expecting something more along the lines of, here's some money. But, alright. She gave me, press F5 and attack! Attack! <laughs> 
You know what I want to do? I want to go back to my stronghold. <sighs> Let's see here. <sighs> I'm almost over 10,000. Copper Lane District has a lot going on. Cause I still haven't even done anything in this whole big section here. And plus there's all the rest of the city. And all the rest of the world. Okay. I'm gonna go... Hmm, a little map. Wait, wait a second, what's this? Lockpicks, I will take. Thank you. Igrin's weapons are decent, but nothing compared to what we make at First Fire's Keep. Don't fall into the canal. Thanks for that advice. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go back to my stronghold. Maybe your prisoner knows where that guy keeps his money. Yeah, maybe. I'm gonna find out what he knows. I'm gonna see what I can do with him. Like, can I interrogate him? Can I kill him? Can I... I don't know. I don't know what happens once you've got a guy in your dungeon. Okay, we're literally right outside of home. You, you don't need to bed down on the friggin' ground like 30 yards from the front door to our house. But I get it, you're tired. What have I fixed up since the last time I was here? I wanna see my new stuff. So, this is still trashed. I still haven't fixed up the forum. I still haven't fixed this up, whatever it is. This is my artificer shop. I've been in there since I fixed it. I still haven't planted my garden. I think, am I making the hedge mage right now or did I already do it? I forgot. Okay, I'm working on it. Nine hours, this thing will be done. I've got a blooded thug. That's one of my hirelings. Oh, hey, this is the other place. Oh, there's my new guy that I just hired, Ryotai Linebreaker. Ooh, he looks tough. He looks like he'll be a good defender. Okay. So this must be my curio shop. People do camp in their backyard. Maybe she's one of those people. <laughs> yeah. But do they camp out on the road out in, out in front of their place? Ooh, the curio shop. Essence shimmers within these bottles. Can I steal from my own shop? Dozens of spider legs protrude from the necks of these bottles. That's gross. Okay, curio shopkeeper. Good day, stranger. It's good to see you, my lord. We have all manner of odds and ends here, acquired from every corner of the deer wood. Spider venom, scolder ears, anything you might wish. I'd like to see what you have. Certainly. Now, it annoys me that I don't get a discount on these shops that are in my own fucking keep. Like, I built your store, and you don't give me a discount? Seriously? But, you know. Ooh, wow, they really do have a lot of good stuff here. Like, I can, this is all you need to craft, like, anything. And most of it's not really that expensive, honestly. Like, the binding copper, I'm always needing binding copper for stuff. And it's pretty cheap. Maybe I should do some... Of course, enchantments still cost money, but... It's nice that I can get as much of this stuff as I want now, basically. Because, yeah, it's like a limited amount. Like, it only, like, she only has three binding copper, right? But if I leave and come back, then she'll have more. You know, that's how that kind of works. So, maybe I should just examine the... Like, do I want to make any potions or scrolls? I can make... See, like, I need binding copper to make those. Or those. Hmm. So I don't really use potions very often, but that's just because I'm hoarding them, because I know I don't have very many. 
Awakened wood. Does she sell awakened wood? Greetings. Awakened wood. Yep, she does. It's kind of expensive, but awakened root. She pretty much has everything. Let's see. Bet she doesn't have awakened Audra though, or pearls. That's like the high tier shit. Or she doesn't have gems at all, but she does have she has the she doesn't have plants either. What she has is the third thing, the like weird animal part thing, or monster part, I should say. Maybe I should make some of these minor endurance potions. Cost two hundred forty copper, and I get two of them. Hmm. Up the rent, I. Yeah, right? Like, these don't, these people don't even pay me anymore. I guess that's part of what the taxes I collect represent. Alright, maybe I don't need any potions right now. But scrolls... I could use some scrolls. This requires two troll skin, two jasper, two springberry. Hmm... Awakened Roots. Alright, hold on. Could enchant my stuff. Enchanting's expensive, though, even if you have the ingredients. Already fine, okay. Probably would make us a little better, though, to enchant some of this stuff. a lot of enchantments I could do, but every time I think of doing it, I'm like, oh, I don't really want to spend the money. <clears throat> Maybe the only thing I should do is, like, make this armor fine quality. That's not that expensive. That's done. That was easy enough. That's some good damage reduction. Could put 
Does he have a plus constitution from something now? Deflection, yeah, he has those boots. Should make her, her armor fine too. What the heck? Well, might as well. Those are my frontliners, so they need the damage reduction. Um, their weapons and shields and stuff are already pretty good. Oh, I don't have enough Pilgrim's Crown, apparently, for that. Put stats on my robe. Like plus intellect or something. Oh yeah, I should decide who's going to wear this necklace. I kind of want to wear it on her, but... I don't really want to lose the plus two perception very badly. On the other hand... Intellect and resolve would help more. One intellect, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I don't think anybody else really wants to wear that perception necklace either, though. Because perception's kind of. I can get a little deflection out of it, but. Everybody else already has better stuff on their neck, I think. So. Fork of the Falcon's Eyes is going into the box. All right. Hello. You know, I'm going to buy these binding coppers here real quick, just in case when I'm out in the field I need to... In fact, that's a good idea. Make sure that if I need to make some like more healing potions out in the field, I've got what I need to do that. Looks like I'm covered. Okay, let's get out of here. Thanks, Curio Shopkeeper. Be cautious. I don't Be really need to sleep. So, I'm going to go in the house and rest in a second, but first... What else have I built? Library. Oh, I should check out my library. <coughs> towers. What do my towers look like? Um, well, they look pretty nice, I guess. Not that they necessarily look all that different than they did before, but... They were probably more ruined looking before. This guy's still hanging around, even though I fired him a long time ago. Oh, Lord Sidrak, this is my guest. My, my prestigious visitor. He's got quite a robe there, doesn't he? I should have brought more bags. What am I to do without my green robes? 
I say, you've done quite well with the place. A little more gilding on the pillars, perhaps? Some marble? Oh, I see, because I think you have to have enough prestige for people like this to come. He's a prestigious visitor, so if I didn't have enough prestige, he wouldn't come visit. And then it makes me more prestigious to have him here. Well, that's nice, Lord Sidrock. Anything new to say? Talking throne? I trust all is well, my lady. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. What is the state of the key? Ah, uh, where to begin? Let's see. Uh, okay, right. Um, anything in the box for me? Ooh, a Zorro tongue. That's from my curio shop. It just generates free shit for me every once in a while. Well met, friend. Um, my merchant. I don't think I need anything from him. But, like, let's say I wanted a potion of minor endurance. See, I'd have to pay him 450 copper for it. Whereas I could make one... I could make two of them for 120 plus the materials. So that's actually a pretty good deal compared to ever buying potions. Welcome. I don't think I need to do anything with this man. I'm going to sell that? No, I'll hold on to it for now. Okay. I think my library is through here. That I've just I've built I fixed up my library. It looked like shit before, so let's see how it looks now. I don't know if there's anything in it. Oh my god, look oh my god. Is it oh my god holy shit, that's a lot of things I can loot. Is it just literally full of books? Surprisingly well stocked for a backwater fortress. Well yeah. I just spent like fifteen hundred copper fixing this thing up. It was all empty before. Oh my god. Books. Books. So many, so many books. Give them all the Kana for now. I've probably read a good portion of them already. I shall be quiet as a calm sea. Yeah, before there was no books. Everything was all broken and there was all cobwebs and everything. Now I got it all nice. My library. And of course I'm going to loot everything. This is like all the books. This map shows the Deerwood's old colonial borders. A settlement called New Dunreed is marked in the place of present-day Defiance Bay. Yeah, that's what used to be the name of the, the city. Yeah, I think I've already read nearly all of these books. So let's see. Alright, Tale of Fabian Bernat I've read. I just read that one recently. Psalm de Wodica, I have read. Ethereum Dialects, I've read. Daily Affirmations of Focus and Efficiency, I've read. This one was kind of cool, from uh, Abaddon, the Golem God. Nasatak Poetry, I've read. Uh, oh, this is that play part two. 
So I have I haven't read it, but I'm carrying it around because I was hoping to find part one. The dozens I've read. Deerwood four, Hadrid's Rebellion I've read. Deerwood part three I've read. Deerwood part five I've read. Deerwood part six I've read. Widewind Farmer Become God I've read. Deerwood one I've read and the Great Western Stag I have read. That one I've read. Book of the Hunt. Oh, I just read this one, like, on this stream. Uh, and I just read this one, too. Rathian Scripture, I read. Dunreed Row, I've read. House Dominal, I've read. Agronic Benediction, I've read. Bayesian Prayer. I've read. Edrang Hadrid, I believe I read also. This was the father of Admeth Hadrid. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the general that fought uh, Galvin Regged. And yeah, I read it. Monsters of the Dead by Fire Archipelago. Read it. Many Faces of Bereth. Read it. Read it. Ten Years of Dawn. Yep, read it. Okay, so I just pulled all those books and I've literally read all of them, so. Um, Admeth Hadrid. Is there an Admeth Hadrid Part 1? Because I'm still looking for that book. And. I've yet to find it. I just found Part 2 a couple of times. So, yeah. I have read so many books in this game already. Can't believe I just looted, like. I don't know, 25 books or something, and I've read them all. That's awesome. Twenty-seven books, I should say. All right. Well, cool. I can sell all of those that I have extras of now. All right, let's go down to my dungeon now, which is right through here. What's up, Jailer? Good day to you. Greetings, my lady. Come to visit the dungeons? Do you have any instructions for me? What do you want done with these prisoners? Show them who is master here. I want them all flogged regularly. <laughs> or I'd like to release a prisoner. I don't need anything at the moment. So where's my where is my current prisoner? I'm just gonna open all the cells if that's okay. The wall is scratched with an almost illegible string of profanities. Where is he at? Jailer, shut all these doors. Why are all these doors open? What are you doing? What kind of jailer are you running here? There he is. I see him. Hi, Nyrid. It's not too late for me to kill you. I want you to know that right now. I could still kill you. Why is he still in street clothes? Why haven't you put him in a fucking jumpsuit? Feeling proud, are we? Leave me alone. You should really stop sassing me now. I can tell a man over there to flog you, and he will. I'll have you rotting in a pit the rest of your days when I get out of here. Hmm. It was a good plan, you have to admit. Till you turned up, anyhow. You would have gotten away for it, with it if not for these meddling kids. Hey, Jen, how you doing? Worst jail ever. Man, it's not too late to kill you. Oh, no. Get out of the cell first. Now I feel compelled to sh close all the cell doors. Look, if this was someone else's jail, I would leave them open. But this is my dungeon, so... You know. We have... We have standard stuff hold here. Well, if I was a less kind and benevolent character, I would tell my jailer to go ahead. 
Go ahead and flog that guy, but... No, shut the door. Shut it. Can't just be leaving doors open all crazy. Kill me? What? What are you talking? Kill you? Hail, traveler. Hmm. No, I keep it. Because I think at some point, like, enemies will, they will come to you and be like, they want to they wanna pay you a ransom to let their guy out or something. So at least I'm keeping him. I'm keeping him in the, in the, well, you said kill you. No, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the guy, the prisoner in the game. I wasn't saying I would kill you. What? That'd be crazy talk. Alright, well, I wasn't able to, like, interrogate him or anything, which is unfortunate, but... At least I've got him locked up, which is sort of amusing. That looks like a shitty place to do time. There's no yard. And see there's no chow hall. No showers. Afraid to close your eyes, Watcher? Not all of us are on such bad terms with sleep. God damn it, hobo priest. Now you want to cry about not getting enough rest. I finally got all my companions, Jen, and I've picked out my, my legit final group. I actually have two women in the, in the crew now, besides my character. Quit. This one jingles when you select her because she's a little bit of a weirdo. Your will, Watcher. Good. This is my Quit. favorite character Good. now, though. Godlike bird paladin lady from. She's awesome. Your thoughts must flow deep indeed. Now we're going back to the rest. We're going back to take a take a little nap nap. And we're gonna go back to the city. I just shut down a ring of drug dealers. That was the guy that was running them that I just put in my prison instead of killing him. Pretty exciting stuff. Oh yeah, I still haven't fixed up my Like this is my lab. I fixed this up. But I still haven't actually fixed up like my fountain. It looks like crap still. And whatever this room is for, I don't know what this room even is, but it looks terrible. Oh, I guess it's the kitchen. Who did you kick out? It's small, I can't see. Uh, I kicked out the elf wizard. I know you're going to be sad. The elf mage. I've sent him off on an adventure. Naked, by himself. Normally he stands right here looking at the books as if he's reading stuff. But he's gone now. I sent him off. Poor Aloth. He's off on an adventure. I don't know what will happen. I also kicked out the, uh... Well, my recruited rogue that I hired from the end, and I kicked out... I got my cool little druid guy. He's... he's He was pretty cool, but I kicked him out. And I kicked out the dwarf ranger girl also. So now I can pick a bonus. It's pretty much always got to be mechanics, though. Let's keep it real. Because I've fixed all these different things in my keep, so now I can get different bonuses when I rest here if I want. Yeah, she was pretty cool, but... She was less... Oh, my hedge maze is done. I've always wanted a hedge maze. See, now that the hedge maze is done, if I wanted to, I could use its bonus and get a plus to stealth. The window on the other side of the curtain looks down on the perfect rows of a hedge maze. It used to say something else, like the window looks down on some crappy looking plants that look crappy. You know, that's a bit of a paraphrase. It's probably not exactly how it said it, but... Alright. Now what am I going to build here? I built a lot of stuff, or fixed a lot of stuff. I can make a craft hall. A chapel. A for oh yeah, we got to get the forum going. Oh wait, no, botanical garden. 
It'll make random plants for me. I don't want that. Alright, upgrade my botanical garden. Let's go. Fixing everything up on this stronghold is pretty expensive, though. Spending, like, all my money on it. could go down and try to do another level of the dungeon under my place, but the last one kind of kicked my butt pretty bad. And I still haven't leveled up since then. That's been forever since I leveled up. I don't even remember what the level up screen looks like. Mm. That's the XP bar right there. Takes a long time to Keep, uh, keep it up there, Vanguard Soldier. You're doing a great job standing in that one spot day after day after day. Oh, wait. I'm going to go look at my hedge maze. Keep it up, blooded thug. You're doing a good job standing around there being a thug. Oh, look. It's a hedge maze. I can't, like, run through the maze, sadly, but it's there. I think it's going to be back to the city. Ooh, Searing Falls. Hmm. Back to Copper Lane. Oh yeah, now my character's going to be tired again because I've got to walk like almost an entire day to get from the stronghold back to the back to town. Keeping an eye out. Super sneaky time. It's a cat. <laughs> a little black hound following me along. These guys still. Anything new with you, protest leading guy? Man, these protesters are dedicated day and night, 24 7, for like. I don't know how many days now they've been doing their thing. Yeah, he doesn't say anything new. Okay. So, now that I'm back here, what am I doing? Okay, I did everything in the Goose and Fox. I explored the marketplace. I went in the expedition hall. I got a quest. Went in Pernish's house and killed the drug dealers. I talked to the actors over here at the amphitheater. So, whatever's back over here, I still haven't. I want it to be daytime again, though. I don't like running around at night, because a lot of the NPCs and stuff are not. It's hour four, so it'll be daytime in a couple hours, but maybe I'll just go in and rest real quick. And then it'll be noon. I won't have to worry about my characters suddenly getting fatigued, because they just walked for almost a whole day to get here. Is she still in the I wonder if she's still here, or if she's gone home. Hey, she's gone. She didn't go home. I mean, she didn't stay here. She did go home. What's up, Bishop? Kalen, well met. Gonna need a room, buddy. The cheap one, though. Alright, cool. Now it's noon. It'll be nice and bright out. How far are you? Um, you know, not very far. Like... I'm not even halfway through the game. I'm in Act 2 now, but not very far into it, really. <sighs> and there's four acts. And there's so much stuff that I haven't done in this game. Like, I'm not even... Yeah, like I said, I'm not even halfway. 
and I've got a lot of hours. Now, I mean, a person could finish this game, completely finish it, in less time than I have played it. How many, let me see, how many, how many, uh, let me see how many hours I've, I've put into this now. Let's see here. My save game will tell me. Apparently I've played 82 hours. 82 hours and I'm not even halfway done. That's awesome. Again, that's me though. The way I play these games, I'm super slow. Like I do a whole lot of unnecessary stuff. And I read everything. And I explore everything way too thoroughly. And I go back places over and over to see if I missed anything. And I talk to people again. I do conversations over and over. Oh, fearsome rumors persist of strange and hooded figures emerging from the city catacombs. The city guard advises caution and requests that all citizens keep alert. Do go on, crier. Cry. Cry away. Is that it? That's all the crying you're going to do? Fine. Um, I don't know why I'm... I don't know what I'm doing. Do I have Inquisition, by the way? It's half off this weekend. Really? Half off this weekend where? On Origin? Or... Is that where, where you have to get it? I shall be quiet as a calm sea. Which is... not very... What are the, who are these refugees? Such grim times. I'm glad that not everyone takes things so si Wait a minute. They're saying the same things as the regular commoners. I didn't want to come here, but my village wasn't safe anymore. If animancers caused the legacy, they have a lot to answer for. Hmm. I've had bad harvest before, but this year was the worst it's ever been. I'm down to my last few coppers. What am I going to do? Um, well... I know a Svef dealer nearby who could probably use a corner kid. Alright. Wow, $30 instead of $60. That's pretty good. Just this weekend, you said? Like through Sunday, basically? I might have to do that. I might have to pick that up, because... Although it's going to be a while before I'm actually ready to play it. It would be good to get it for half price. We've already talked to these people. Still neutral here. So did you get on the dagger? Did I already see this conversation? What? No, of course not. Gordy's a nice kid, but March steel is expensive. He'd probably cut his fingers off anyway. Okay. I think most of these commoners have are just say the same things. How about you, sir? Uh huh. My eyes are peeled. Yeah, this might be the first time it's been on sale since it came out. So this is allegedly Lumdala's house. Now, Lumdala was the actress lady that was standing down here, and she seemed really suspicious. Something about that acting company seemed very questionable. So I'm going to see if I can break into her house and root around through her shit. Like a good hero. <laughs> hmm. This painting depicts the famous scene from The Light of Dawn in which the traveler and the ghost happen upon a starving man. Hmm. Okay. The famous scene. Well, yeah. Everybody knows about that scene. Ooh. While I'm investigating evil in the city, and my investigation will require me to take whatever is on this shelf. This ale? This ale right here? Evidence. Okay. 
expecting to like run into a coven of vampires here or something. Hmm. Whatever's in this drawer is suspicious. This gold? Clearly, clearly this gold is ill-gotten gains. I think this might be a book I haven't read. Have I read this? I think I have. Maybe not, though. Seems pretty relevant. Plot relevant, given all this animancy stuff. New books. Yeah, I have found so many books, and I have read them all. Like, I just I just fixed up the library at my, um, at my stronghold, and when I fixed up the library, I went in there, and there were just like a million books I could, re I could loot. Like, 28 of them, actually. But I, I looted all 28 books, and I found that I had actually already read every single one of them. Look how many books I have. I've read all these books, all of them. But I don't think I've read this one. Actually, there's an easy way to find out. Because if I, I have put it in there and it's now in a stack, then I've read it. Because I never get rid of a book. Okay, so I haven't read it. Mention the name Pandgram to anyone with even a passing knowledge of animancy and you could find yourself in for a very long discussion. Publicly reviled, but privately lauded as a hero and genius, Pangram's history is at turns revolutionary, horrific, and mysterious. Pangram was fascinated, some might say obsessed, with the concept of animancy. It consumed his life as he dedicated everything to understand it. He would frequently travel to Air Glanfeth and the Deerwood to visit the Anguithan ruins. There he would take notes and make sketches, bringing anything back with him that he could, bringing anything back with him that he could to help him unlock the mysteries. After years of study, Pangram had reached the point where he could no longer conduct research on his own, and he took on an assistant, Helig of Thane. Soon, Helig was making trips to Air Glanfeth in Pangram's stead, gathering knowledge while Pangram stayed behind to experiment. This partnership quickly bore fruit, and Pangram made a breakthrough, one that would irrevocably change his life and the general attitude about animancy forever. While the specifics of his experimentation will never truly be known, the rumors and stories that still circulate tell that he had sent out inquiries, asking for live subjects for help with a dangerous experiment that might change their life, or might end it. Those who were already dying were especially encouraged to apply. <laughs> Response was overwhelming, and Pangram had his pick of numerous willing bodies. That is when he had his breakthrough. He discovered a way to fix a soul, anchoring it to its body so it couldn't leave at death. He had discovered eternal life. His research and life's work had resulted in the single greatest discovery that Animaster could hope for. His findings were published and quickly spread throughout Valia and beyond. While some groups, the Wodokan Church for example, decried his work as nothing more than blasphemy and heresy, many put it to practice. Everyone wanted the chance at immortality. But everything comes with a cost. It quickly became apparent that simply restraining the soul, while keeping the person technically alive, was doing nothing for the body, which continued to decay, devolving and warping the soul now trapped inside it. The creatures it created were dangerous, carnivorous beasts that killed brutally and indiscriminately. The backlash was ruthless. The practice of Pangram's discoveries was outlawed. His books were collected and burned. He and Helig were branded heretics and hunted, chased from town to town until Pangram simply vanished. Helig was tracked down, captured, and brought to trial for the atrocities committed against Valia and its people. The trial was barely more than a formality to bring charges against him, as everyone knew what hand he had played in the disaster. He was sent to prison for years, but eventually released once public outrage died down. Not long after his parole, he disappeared as well. 
occasionally talk surfaces that a copy of Pangram's theorems has been found, untouched by the purging flames that destroyed its brothers. These rumors seldom end up being more than that. Many groups and wealthy individuals have formed, sending out a call to anyone who will listen, find us a copy of the theorems. They offer gold, jewels, status, anything they can to entice adventurers to help them achieve their goals. For there are those who would give anything a chance at immortality, even become a monster. Yeah, see, I think I remember when I was talking to that Animancer lady that was had her lab set up in the dungeons of um, Radric's Keep, the one that I killed because she was crazy and doing crazy shit. I think she talked about this. She talked about Pangrim and his, his theories or his theorem, so... I had to take her out. But I have a feeling there's going to be some animancy that takes place in this city, because all those protesters were crying about it. Apparently for good cause, though, because everything I've heard about it is just bad. They tried anchoring souls to bodies, people turn into crazy zombies and eat people. They tried anchoring, they tried putting animal souls into the soul, into the bodies of soulless children. Children turned into crazy feral children and started eating people. I mean, basically, oh, really, it's going to require a key. I can't just be picking the lock, eh? Can I look at that bookcase through the wall? No. All right. Fine. Didn't want to anyway. Well, yeah, so the fact that that creepy actress lady that was acting all... all Stodgy, that's her house, and she has that book on animancy in her house. Who's a good boy who needs his belly scratched? Did he seriously just have a banter based on the pet that I have out? That's amazing. Would he? Would he have a little? Can we have somebody have a little talk with the space piglet? Probably not, because the space piglet was like a pre-order bonus, but the that dog's actually a plot companion. Like, you have to go through a little plot thing to get him. Same with the black cat. That's that's actually an undead cat. This is what I got from that animaster lady I was just talking about. This small black cat makes a grisly companion, for its thin hide is stretched over its bones. The skin is rotting away around its chin, and there's an unsavory gleam in its golden eyes. All the same, it seems content to twine about your ankles, purring. Yeah, so I got this undead cat from the Animancer lady that I killed that I was just talking about. The Black Hound pet I got from the the inn called the Black Hound because it had been abandoned by its master and the hound was just there being sad so I brought him with me. And I found this tiny white worm inside a, its egg hatching in the dungeon beneath my keep. And I think that those are the only legitimate pets I found in the game. These two the obsidian worm I got from being a Kickstarter backer, and the giant miniature space pig that I got from um, pre-ordering the game or whatever. But these other three I've actually found, and they actually involved a little like dialogue thing when I got them. So that was pretty cool. Like my companion just actually said something to the dog. I didn't know that would happen. Uh, hello, commoner. Well, thank you for telling me that very common thing, commonly. So I think it's this. Ooh, the Scrivener's Dormitory. I've always wanted to hang out with some Scriveners. They sound like exciting people. I need some shit Scrivened. Oh, there's a Scrivener right there. What's up, man? Let's let's talk Scrivening. Someone's been reshelving improperly. When Fexa finds out, oh, I hate improper reshelving. It's the worst. Do I need to go in there? Is this gonna be a quest? Like find the find the improper reshelver and like deliver the justice of the Scriveners upon him? <laughs> really? When I find him, I'll throw the book at him. Cause then, yeah. If you think these books are impressive, you should see what Grimda keeps in the back. Ooh, the back. I'm all about going to the back. I don't know if you know this, Scrivener, but I'm not actually inside. I can't see the books you're talking about, but... I assume you just... We're going in. We're going into the Scrivener's Hall. 
Yeah, Scrivener is awesome. I think that just means something like scribe, right? Like, Scrivener is like a scribe. Oh, some shit's been getting scrived in here. Be cautious. Be constant. Spilled tea, empty ink pots, and one detailed sketch of a fire-breathing old dwarf are all that remain of a long study session. Books. Oh, money. Okay, well, um, I guess it does pay to read. There's a guy. There's a scrivener with a name. Well, first thing that needs to happen is I need to make sure there's nothing dangerous in here that could possibly harm these innocent scriveners. Yes. And there's obviously something dangerous in this armoire, so... See, scroll of revival. You can't, you can't leave this laying around. Scriveners could get hurt with this, so... Let me just... Yeah. I'm gonna take that right out of there. Scrivener is a program I use or don't use anymore because you're a slacker. Is it? Is it? It's something people use for like writing, right? I think I've heard. I've heard of that program before. Who can even use that scroll? Six lore. That's a lot of lore. He can't. She can't. Ah, Hobo Priest can use it, of course he can, and so can Crazy Bard Guy, or we don't call him a bard, he's a scholar chanter. So those two could use that scroll. I can almost use it, but not quite. But, yeah, they already have a bunch of stuff. I need more quick slots, for real. novel writing. You don't use it for shorts. It's a great program, though. Yeah, I've heard, I heard mention of it. I don't remember where I was reading something about All right, then. Like on the blog of some writer, and they, and they mentioned it. Let's do some scrivening. The sturdy bunks are topped with thin blankets and even thinner mattresses. Ah, oh, scriveners don't have comfy beds. Hmm. These scriveners accidentally left themselves locked out of this drawer. Let me help them by getting that open for them. Well, these are dangerous mushrooms. See? It says right here they're dangerous. Boom. Improperly treated samples are akin to poison. I can't just leave those laying around. Can't. I wouldn't be able to live with myself if these scriveners got poisoned. Let's see what else is dangerous around here. They might have left some dangerous currency about. If they leave that all that gold laying around, somebody might come here to try to rob them for it, and then somebody could get hurt. So, you're welcome. He must be here for Corin. Mm, sure. I don't know how Corin's hidden his little racket from gr Oh, excuse me. Someone's been sneaking naughty picture books from Old Valia into the dorm. I won't say who. <laughs> where, where are these naughty picture books? It smells like old stockings in here. Apparently Scrivener is living in tight quarters. Kind of, uh, kind of gross. The pay's good. I live close to the library, and I can read as many books as I want. That does sound pretty great. You must be here for Corin. I don't really know who that is, but apparently that it's that guy. I don't know how Corin's hidden his little racket from... Oh. But they're all saying the same thing. Fine Scriveners. Look, it's a little mini Scrivener. Mini Scriv. Okay, this is going to be awkward, buddy, because I notice you have some things here that you don't want me to steal, and... A rancid stench rises from the basin. The dishes at the top of the pile are flecked, are flecked with morsels of meat and cheese. Those at the bottom are coated in a slimy fuzz. Oh, gross. These scriveners need a maid or something, or a, some kind of butler, or, or they just need to get off their asses and clean. Because, yuck. Eh? No Alright, maybe if she sneaks over here, this guy won't notice her anymore. There we go. The stealth thing is going away. 
Because I'll bet there's some vegetables or something there that I just absolutely have to have. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Oh, yeah, vegetables. Three of them. Fat vegetable loot. Uh, my, my party has so much extra bioflavonoids now. <laughs> now we're playing with power. Okay, go. Take it. Do it. Ooh, some rice, too? I've got almost everything I need for a stir-fry. It was so worth coming in here. Now if I could just find a walk. Alright, have I stolen everything I can steal? From the Scrivener's dormitory? I think I have. I guess I'll talk to the guy. Maybe he has a quest for me. Alright, Corin. Good day to you. By Wells Eyeless Face, you are one short ogre. But why are you green, and how are you getting the ducks to keep flying around you like that? Okay, wow. I like this guy. He's either on something, or he's just a particularly touched individual. Or maybe his eyesight's just really bad. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your ducks, your green skin. Should I speak louder? Slower? Let me know. He beams at you and nods his head. You're a scrivener? He nods. Yes, I am a scrivener! <laughs> I read books, I write books, I once ate a book, but only because it looked like sweet pie. Or perhaps it was sweet pie, baked to look like a book. Interesting. Oh, oh, oh! I'm also a collector of herbs, I'll bet you are. Flowers, plants, I sell them. Mostly I eat them. <laughs> okay, this is now my favorite guy. <laughs> He's been eating things he shouldn't be eating. Uh, show me what you have for sale. Oh boy, he has all the drugs. He's got the Caro Golan. I've read about that. He's got the Black Sun, I've read about that. He's got the snow caps. I just found some of those, and I've also read about them. The Ripple Sponge, I got some of those. These are all, like, basically drugs. Like, you take them and they give you a little benefit, but then after they wear off, they, they like, debuff you. The White Leaf, I've got. And the Gold Rot Chew. Okay, so these are all, these are all things that I've... That I've, um, yeah, so he's been eating all this stuff. No wonder he's all wackadoo. That's funny. He's, he sells herbs, quote unquote. Okay. Uh, Good day, stranger. Corrin sways slightly from side to side. Your skin's still green, but you've lost your ducks. Tell me about the dormitory. It's where the scriveners who work at the Hall of Revealed Mysteries sleep. I'm a scrivener. He sniffs. This place smells like old stockings. I've noticed that myself. He beams at you and nods his head. Farewell. Okay. Cool. I have a feeling I'm going to have to come back here at some point, like, pursuant to a quest. Because, you know, yeah. Corin the Scrivener. Alright. Let's go. I took their vegetables, too, just in case they were unsafe. And that rice, that rice was looking really dodgy. Really dodgy. Is it seriously nighttime again already? What the hell? Alright, so there's the Hall of Revealed Mysteries. That's apparently where the Scriveners... Scriven. When they're not hanging around with... When they're not... Oh, Which no. Not very quiet. Who are these people? Oleg Shemanovsky and Historian. I am sensing... I am sensing that there may be some, um... Vibrant histories here. Vibrant histories. Calling it now. Which will involve reading, which will make Jen happy. Done so much reading in this game, you don't even know. Oh look, it's a vibrant history! Wow, I'm seeing... A big long story in this person's soul. Okay, reach out for the soul. Let's go. You see a small crowd gathering near the entrance to a temple. 
This man stands against the wall, the crowd forming a semicircle around him. He speaks with a calm, measured tone, his soothing voice carrying over the sounds of the surrounding city. He speaks of the world, history, the gods, and religion. He speaks of cooking, brewing, child raising, and old wives' tales. There does not seem to be a subject he lacks at least a passing knowledge in. People ask him questions, and he answers them in turn, sometimes being detailed and in-depth, other times only giving a general answer. Regardless of what is said, all of his answers seem to hit to the heart of what is asked, each person satisfied with what they've learned. People come and go from the crowd, its size growing and shrinking, but never completely dissipating. Hours pass, and he never seems to tire, sharing his knowledge with anyone who would benefit from it. As the light of day wanes, the group finally growing small enough that he draws everything to a close. As he gathers his belongings and prepares to leave, a man approaches him, asking why he does this. He asks for no money, no food. What benefit is gained from his actions? He looks at the man, gathering his thoughts, then simply tells him, Knowledge brings wisdom. That is my faith. Stay a while and listen. Okay, now, so basically uh, we got Socrates here. And um, he's got a crazy glowing moon head. And now we've seen... We've seen his past. Thanks, historian. Hey, yeah. nice nice robe. I like, your, I like your fashion sense there. Oh, look at my dog. It's just wandering around. My little black hound. All right, Oleg Shimanovsky. Yeah. You sound like a character from the Brothers Karamazov. What's your story? Hopefully, this is not a Tolstoy-length situation. I know that Brothers Karamazov is actually Dostoevsky, not Tolstoy, but Tolstoy's books were longer in general, so that's why. So, as you near, you feel a vibrant history. <laughs> wow, I'm so surprised by this turn of events. Reach out for the soul. Here we go. All right, Tolstoy, what do you got? You see a dark room, its contents in disarray. The blinds are pulled against the light, and the sounds of shouting and running can be heard outside. This man moves through a house, throwing items into a bag. He wraps up some food, collects some clothes, and searches through a chest for various odds and ends that resemble magical components. He stops at a bookshelf and quickly scans the spines, running his fingers along them to help keep his place. He sighs, sliding his finger across the spines again, mumbling to himself. Finally, he chooses a couple of titles and takes them from the shelf, adding them to the assortment of items he has already gathered. A small group of squirrels and birds watch him as he passes through the rooms, moving almost as a single entity. They are trying to stay near him, but also seem to know to stay out of his way. He is obviously in a hurry, but he maintains a deliberate demeanor about everything he does. The outer door the outer door is bursts open. Hmm. The outer door is bursts open with an explosive sound, causing the animals to scatter, terrified. The man turns, bringing a hand up, holding a book in his other, whispering something that can barely Ice crystals begin to form with the tips of his fingers crackling against the heat of the room. He sees the man standing in the doorway and immediately drops his hands, the ice vanishing as quickly as it disappeared. The man in the doorway gestures, telling him to hurry, and points toward the horizon somewhere outside. The man in the house dismisses him with a wave, saying he is almost done here, will be coming soon. He scans the dwelling one more time, searching for something he might have missed. Satisfied, he leaves, not even bothering to close the door. Outside, he can see people, all prepared as he is, traveling away from town, away from the rising plumes of smoke on the horizon. Hmm. So. Okay. I feel like I have a lot of insight into Oleg Shimanovsky now, and... My life is richer for the experience. Light, flame, sour. What are you doing, Scrivener? Shouldn't you be back home doing some not washing your socks or something? We'll keep to ourselves. Grimda is especially cranky today, and that's saying something. 
So we don't know Quickly who this inquire. Remda is. So here's the canal. There's the, the with the um, theater thing. I wonder if the actors are still there doing their thing here at night. What is it? It's almost, it's almost midnight. They are still here, man. These actors are. See, there's Lundala. She's creepy. There's something weird about her. 24/7. These actors. Audience member, gasp. Okay. Before we go to the... You were so lovely back then. Is he just talking to himself? Oh, Dalton. Please go on. Don't let me interrupt your conversation with you. Alright, we'll talk to you in a second, Dalton. Can I... Can I... Actually, let's talk to him now. Dedication. This elderly man paces back and forth, making short, hobbled steps. His gaze is distant, and beneath it are the dark rings of many restless nights. He appears to be having a conversation with someone who isn't there. Well, I mean, come on. We, we all do that, right? Cannot judge. You think you have to go to bed now? Okay, well, <laughs> when you're sleepy, it's good to go to bed. Good night. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. Yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the host. And the way you fought, cutting down two at a time. We shared quite a victory, you and I. <laughs> wow, I can just be a total asshole. Or not. Who are you talking to? The man looks up at you, startled. My! Oh, by the flame! For just a moment I thought I heard her. He puts a hand on his chest, catching his breath. What troubles you? Just the memories of my youth in the North Watch Rangers. Trials and adventures from a lifetime ago. He shakes his head. Of late, the memory of lost battles and fallen friends has been especially vivid. <laughs> Make it quick, old man. What the fuck? Tell me about these memories. It's been nearly 60 years. We were known throughout the dear wood then. We thought we'd adventure together forever, collecting coppers and inspiring songs. The wrinkles around his eyes deepen. That was until we faced Helig of Thane. And we just read about Helig of Thane. That was the apprentice of the Animancer guy that was basically creating all the undead because they were like, lol, look, we discovered immortality. And they're like, oh shit, un unintended consequences. They're eating people. Damn it, damn it. Um, so it was that guy. He was a wizard whose experiments in necromancy left a trail of bodies. Some reanimated. From Solace Vale to Midwood, we tracked him as he fled toward the Valian Republics, catching him just west of the Lake of Drowned Tombs. We were fools. Seasoned as we were, we were not prepared for his foul magic. Our numbers were nothing against his power. A wiser man would have ordered a retreat, not me. By some curse of the gods, I was knocked out, and when I awoke, my rangers, my Rowena, they were all dead. He holds empty air in his arms. Sad tale, but I must leave. <laughs> Who is this Rowena? My friend, my comrade in arms, and my love. We'd planned to adventure together until we grew old enough to settle down and enjoy our fortunes. Young as we were, we couldn't imagine anything would tear us apart. I know this sounds like an old man's madness, but I hear her. A voice just over my shoulder calling to me in my dreams. At night, I see her wandering the catacombs beneath the city, trying to escape. 
foolish as it sounds, I can't shake the idea that she's somehow down there, waiting for me. I've even ventured below, though it damn near cost me my life. He hesitates. Were I half the warrior I was in my youth, I'd search every grave and rat hole. As it is, I'm stuck with this feeble body and the agonizing notion that my love is somehow down there beyond my help. Silly old fool, I don't have time for your delusions. You want me to chase a dream? It's more than that, I know it! My dreams were never more than faded memories, but this feels as real and as fresh as the conversation we're having now. If it's payment you're concerned about, I still have plenty of weapons for my old adventuring days. They're well made, and they'll serve you on the battlefield or at immersion stall as you choose. I'll search the catacombs for a sign of Rowena. Tears spring to the old man's eyes. There's an entrance just southwest of here, on the other side of the canal. He sniffs and wipes his eyes. You're truly a gift from the gods, if there's anything you can find of her. New quest. Bam. A voice from the past. Today I met Dalton, a retired adventurer in Copper Lane. He's been hearing the voice of Rowena, his lover and comrade, who died at his side almost 60 years ago. In his dreams, she wanders the catacombs beneath the city. He's asked me to venture down there to search for her. Enter the catacombs. Dalton told me of an entrance to the catacombs in the southwest corner of Copper Lane. I'll need to find it if I'm to search for Ronina. I'm assuming it's right there. And what does the flame reveal? His tired eyes brighten. Did you find her? I'm still searching. Mostly because I haven't moved from this fucking spot. Quickly and quietly. Anything else going on over here? Hidden cool shit under cobblestones or anything, because that uh, sometimes happens. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, this looks like some shit's about to jump off. What's this guy doing with all these bodyguards? Okay. Let's cruise huh? up to him. All right then. Uh oh. See, he's mad. A red-faced young man approaches you. He appears livid and stammers as he speaks. You, you, you killed my beloved. This will, this will not stand. It's possible I kill a lot of people. <laughs> Your beloved. What are you talking about? The man's face darkens and he snot. Oh, I did kill your beloved, yeah. Dana and I were to be wed! You will pay for your insolence! Well, now you and your beloved are both gonna be dead. Alright, you and your scrub ass bodyguards, get ready to die. Huh? I ain't trying to take your shit. Boom, run up and. I'm ready. Do that, run up and do that. What? Interdict. Following your lead. Shoot this dude. Your thoughts must flow deeply indeed. I wanna I wanna charm one of these guys. Whoa, they have guns? Okay, let's let's calm it down. That one's that one's dominated for ten point five seconds. Tell me. Hmm. 
That one's also dominated. Cool. These guys just shot the crap out of that guy. Dominate's pretty neat. Alright, Grieving Mother, let's, uh... Ice Strike. Hmm. On your word. I'm ready. Hey. Hmm? On your word. So, I killed her, her people were all mad, then a gang of thugs came after me, I killed them. Now this guy came after me for killing her because apparently they were engaged or something, and I killed him too. So man, these people are just going to be madder and madder and madder at me. Oh, hey Justicar, nothing happened here, just walk on by. These people all just uh, are taking a nap, and they also have very, they have bloody noses, because they have, they get nosebleeds, and there's nothing to see here. Nothing to see here, why these people are all chopped up and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> there's nothing to say. Oh, a bunch of arquebuses. Arquebuses? Arquabi. Arquabubububi. That's, anyway, that's some good... Some good loots. I don't think I have anybody that really needs to use one of those arquabubuses, but still... Course. Hmm. Got it. Your thoughts must flow deeply indeed. Following your lead. Right away. What? I'm ready. Margaret's fire casts light in. I can't believe they just stepped to me like that. Well, now you and your fiance can be reunited in the after in the afterlife. Enjoy that. Oh yeah, this kid keeps wanting to talk to me. Oh yeah, this guy.
Okay, kid. What's your deal? <clears throat> a young boy watches the passers-by and counts a grimy handful of coins. His face and arms are smudged with dirt, but except for the grass stains, his clothes are in good condition. As you approach, he blinks and makes a quick, furtive effort to pocket his coins. So he's kind of a little urchin, huh? Hey, miss! Want to know a secret? He wipes his nose with the sleeve. I know a real good secret! Hmm. Really? What is it? <laughs> right. I'm sure a squeaky-voiced kid knows amazing things about this city. No, I promise! It's a really good secret! He scampers in front of you and starts talking rapidly. I know this place where people hide things, really special things. If you help me, I'll promise I'll show you. Help you with what? Gordy's voice suddenly rises in pitch and tempo. I don't know why I can do that. The Christmas lights of these daggers made of Mon Stickle. It's the best deal around except for the Dugan's deal, which doesn't count because no one makes it anymore. He stops long enough to catch his breath. Anyway, there's this merchant over by the expedition hall, and he's a dagger mega steel, real much steel. His eyes grow large and round. He said he wants out to me because I'm a hen, and kids don't know anything about daggers. But the hell's true. I know lots about daggers. I know about the different kinds of steel. I know how the crystal lines make in my forge. I know the tip of the snow grain steel armor. The dagger was good and sharp. It could cut through bone. How the hell does he know all this? See, I know plenty about daggers, and I really, really want this one. And if you could just get it for me, I promise I'll never, ever ask anyone for anything ever again. <laughs> Ridiculous. Sounds reasonable. I'll get it for you. Sure, fuck it. You're a kid. You want a dagger? Why not? You're too young to play with knives? Okay, I'm not going to be that guy. Can't have a dagger. You'll poke your eye out. Come on. Uh, tell you what. I'll get you to do do Grab him and fucking threaten him. I don't have time for this. Um, I don't want to threaten him. I don't want to lie to him. I don't want to be all, like, parental. Well, hmm. You can't have a dagger. You'll, go, you'll poke your eye out. But if I'm going to be a real warrior, I have to start training young, just like the heroes in the stories. I know I was a great warrior in a previous life. My mom even says I have an old soul. Oh, he's a great warrior in a previous life. Well, then that changes everything. Fine, I'll help you. Gordy jumps up and down, whooping and hollering, Woo! I know a real adventure would understand. He points to a large building. There's a big merchant over by Admiral Den who sells weapons. He's the one with the dagger. I'll wait right here for you. His gap tooth grin stretches from ear to ear. I got a new quest. Boom. New task. Something secrets. I have so many quests now. It's awesome. Gordy, a child in Copper Lane, told me he knows of a place where people hide really special things. He said he'd show it to me if I get him a March Steel Dagger. Find the March Steel Dagger. Gordy told me that a merchant selling weaponry near the expedition all has a dagger. Yeah, it must be that guy that I saw over here that had weapons. Alright. Gordy bounces on the payment. Did you get it? Do you have the dagger? Can I see it? So I could get bajiggity, I could get other bajiggity, or I could just... I don't have it yet. You know what they look like, right? Real crucible night daggers have a special seal on the pummel. Also, you can tell March Steel from Whiffin Steel because Whiffin Steel has this wavy pattern and March Steel doesn't have a pattern at all. See, he knows what he's talking about. Where he trails off, rambling about the various types of steel and no longer paying you any mind. Cool. Alright. Yet another quest. Oh, that one's just a task that must be simple to do compared to... <laughs> just cars just standing there like, uh... Shit. Do I need to report this? This looks like paperwork. Skin flint. Uh-oh, we got skin flint here. Real character or vibrant memory? Vibrant, vibrant history? Anybody, anybody want to guess? I'm thinking he just might be a real character. I just quick saved. I just quick saved right here. And then I came over here and quick saved. What the fuck? Ah, damn it, Vibrant History. You got me. You got me, Skin Flint. Alright. You see a older dwarf. 
counting coins behind a grimy shop window, hair limp with grease and sweat, a sneer playing around the edges of his pinched mouth. The bargains of the day lay scattered across the table, from tarnished, tawdry jewelry to an acid-encrusted dagger lying precariously near the edge. His half-nose twitches in anticipation as a customer enters, a disheveled young noble, once white doublet stained with a life gone wrong. Eyes dart behind him, searching for pursuit, before he dumps the contents of his hessian bag on the table. The dwarf leans forward, fingers flicking through the silverware and assorted goblets. He shakes his head emphatically, sneer fully settled, shoving the items back at the man. The man pleads, begs, eyes rolling, panicked in their sockets, asking for something, anything, a few silvers. The dwarf leers and tosses three copper pans on the table. Desperate, the young noble tears a signet ring from his finger to the dwarf's ill-concealed delight. A few more coins go into the pile, and the defeated man, swearing stitches under his breath, exits the shop. The venerable dwarf grins at his good fortune, picking food out of his two sharp teeth as he examines his haul. So he's like, kind of like a pawnbroker, and not a very honest or, or, uh, or kind one, obviously. Don't make me kill you, Skinflint. Don't make me kill you. And this here is the catacombs, I guess, right? Wherein I will find, hopefully, the what I'm looking for, voice from the past. So that, heirloom breastplate, tell somebody about the plot, bailing an embassy. Still need to talk to her. And these are all like various companion quests. Ducal Palace, Temple of Vodica, Bounties, Pieces of the Ancient Sword, and the March Shield Dagger for Gordy. Man, I have a lot of things to do. Flying Trout, hey, how you doing? I swear this game never ends and you don't sleep. Hashtag truth. Well, it's true that this game never ends. At least not for me. I'm not even halfway through it. <laughs> but... I do sleep, actually. And you showed up just in time for me to leave, actually. I was just about to end this episode and and go off stream. So, good timing. But, uh, yeah, I've, been, I've had fun. I've had fun. Thanks, everybody, for coming and watching. That's going to do it for this episode. When I come back next time, we'll be descending into the catacombs, where I bet we will have to kill some skeletons and shit, because that's what you do in catacombs. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity.